Hello and welcome watch fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and today we are reviewing the much anticipated, the much loved Seiko Alpinus Sabo 17, coming right up after this intro. Hello guys and welcome back. This in front of me is the Seiko Sabo 017 or the Seiko Alpins. So just to run through it, what I will do for this, you can call it like a mini review, but ultimately it is my own personal opinion. I'll run through a bit of the facts of this watch. This is obviously a Seiko watch. It is a discontinued model. I think it was discontinued in 2016. There is a new, I guess, new Alpinus with a different model name. However, I decided to get this one because the portion is absolutely perfect. Speaking of proportions, oh also before I, before I progress, this is a custom strap by Sydney Strap Co that I purchased. It is not the original strap, I quickly disposed of it, but let's move on to checking dimensions. So the case is, did I measure one? There we go. It says 37.5, but it, I, I believe it is supposed to be 38. Now with the crown, 41.3, the thickness is, uh, 9.9 .9 extremely, extremely thin. Sydney Strapco has these straps where um, you've got this quick release. So it, it comes off much easier, especially when you want to keep training your straps. So let's check out the lug width. Uh, lug width is 18. And lug to lug is uh, 44. So extremely, extremely well proportioned. That really just depends on your wrist size. But for me, it is absolutely perfect. I've got six and a half inch wrists and uh, they fit amazingly. So those are the dimensions. This watch currently has a uh, sapphire crystal. It's a flat crystal. So none of that hard lax, extremely scratchable stuff. In terms of the actual case, I believe this is called a compressor case where it's got an internal rotating compass where you don't have to turn it like a bezel on the dive watch. It has a screw down crown as you can see. Let's unscrew. Here. Which is hand windable. With hacking. And uh, as you can see a dead complication. So let me screw that back down. On the back. It's got very, you could say a very simple design. With the Alpinus logo on the back. A little bit of information on the watch. So 20 bar water resistance, so 200 meters water resistance. Obviously made in Japan and it is a Seiko. Inside this beauty is a 6R15 movement. So it is an upgraded movement of the, I believe, 7S26. So it is obviously more, more robust. It is a, a substantially more accurate. It runs on 21,600 beats per hour with a 50 hour power reserve and has a die shock shocks resistant. It used to be, I should say, because when you this watch was before discontinued, I believe you could get it for about four, three, 400 US. Now it's hovering around five, 600 US. And uh, that movement for that price range was ridiculously good. However, with the, I guess the introduction of the new Alpinus and the increased price of this watch, people kind of ask, is this worth it anymore? And from my personal experience, I'd say yes, I've had a lot of fun. It's been, I've been wearing it every single day for the past week or two, posting a lot of photos of it and uh, it's great. In terms of um, timekeeping, it's, I'm getting about like five, six seconds fast a day and I haven't, I don't know how to regulate it. So I haven't regulated it at all. So it's just straight out of the box. It's, it's ridiculously robust, very accurate watch. And look at it, the green dial with the sunburst, it's absolutely stunning. And it goes so well with this leather band, the gold indices, as well as the cathedral hand and the syringe hand. It's, it just looks stunning. But this is the aesthetics. People say that green, the green dial is really hard to, I guess, match clothing. But I beg to differ. Um, I feel like I've been wearing this with whatever I wanted to wear. I can go red shirt, car keys, jeans. I've been wearing blue shirts. Suppose the blue and the blue and the green doesn't match, but it, it goes very well for me. I've also had Milanese straps that it, it kind of dresses this up slightly, or at least it changes the look a little bit. Because this type of leather feels more, um, how would you call it? This leather band kind of feels more outdoorsy. 
So when you chuck like a, a metal band on it, which I don't have one right now, purely because it came with a steel strap, I don't have one. It's coming in the mail, but once I do, I will post some photos up and uh, it will look extra sporty and, and uh, extremely, extremely pleasing to the eye. And if I can have like something that's a bit more dressy, I reckon I can dress this up too, though. I don't think I'll be wearing a suit like a uh, tuxedo or anything with this watch. Maybe not even a suit and tie, but at least a shirt will be will be probably pretty good. Now, this even the crown is signed, so the attention to detail for the price range that it was supposed to be at if it is, is very, very good. The only problem that I feel like I have is that the internal compass, which I don't use, but it just looks really good, is that every time I wear it, my movement will push the north to wherever, you know? because it's so easy to turn. You see how easy it is to turn? Like super, super easy. And if that's the case, I suspect that, like if you're, you're, you've got OCD where you must have the north exactly where 12 is, then I would say you might want to skip this watch because you, you'll be constantly trying to feel a little bit. Unless you like fiddling with this, you know? Obviously I'm not going to use it, but it just, it feels so, oh, so satisfying turning this. You know, it's kind of like the dive watch with the bezel where you, you turn the bezel but yeah so just keep that in mind when you when you have this watch where this will constantly rotate no matter what you do i can put it on it will rotate all the time but that's that's my key gripe um the other gripe will be the price i i didn't buy this for 400 us i probably bought it closer to 650 us which means it's actually really expensive for what it is because as you can look at i'll, I'll show some macros um the actual loom the the loom is just the dots. It actually isn't, it, it's not applied very well. It's slightly off the paint. And uh, I mean, everything is very well polished. And, and this is, is something Seiko kind of gives up on a little bit is that just slight alignment issues. And the other problem is the loom itself. And if you're really like a loom fan, they've only got dots on each um, of the hours. So of the indices. So what it means is that when it does go dark and if you're just glancing down at your watch, you may not know where, uh, you know, 12 o'clock is. So the hands and the second hand or hours, minutes and second hands is completely fine. The loom is, uh, I mean, it's Luma bright. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, and the dots on the hours is also very okay. But anyways, let's, let's jump to a wrist shot. So this is how it looks on the wrist. Absolutely stunning in my point of view cracker of a watch i know i paid too much for it but i feel like i'm just gonna get all the enjoyment and i don't care what you guys think i don't care i don't care nah i do but um it's it's it, it is a great looking watch so yeah it, am i a fanboy of the alpinus hell yeah am i gonna climb a mountain no but will i take this out for hikes and stuff yes i definitely would am i gonna try to learn how to use the compass i think i will i mean it teaches you in the in the booklet and everything i haven't actually used it once I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, so I think my compass usage is slightly different to people in America and well, Northern Hemisphere. Something about it being upside down, you know, like us. But yeah, this is uh, my kind of opinion, if you can call it a review, but it's more my own opinion about the, the watch. Obviously, I won't tell you how to spend your money, but I've already bought it, so I'm going to appreciate this bad boy until the end of time. Let's flip the counter back around. Welcome back and uh, so that was my kind of review or first take or opinion of the uh, Seiko Alpinus. Ultimately, my my love for this has gone up after, well initially I've kind of watched other YouTubers rave on about it. It's such a you know, sought after discontinued watch now and obviously the price has gone up because of that. And now that I have my hands on it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I jumped um in deep end and paid oh well i'm not glad that i paid more for it but i'm glad that i actually bought it because it is such a beautiful beautiful watch and now that it is actually discontinued i almost kind of feel like oh some level of this exclusivity even though you can actually still get it on amazon for about 600 um, american but having said that should you guys get this watch if you can get it for a good deal under 600 if it's 400 500 400 just buy it immediately buy two if you can <laughs> and then resell it. it it is worth the the money um and the enjoyment i'm getting out of it I think it will pay me back in years to come and I feel like I can just hand this down to uh, the next generation because it's such a robust watch and the movement will be so easily accessible that uh, watchmakers can repair it at a cheap cost which you can't really say the same for a lot of in-house movements and things like that. Yeah this is made in Japan so it's every part of this watch is made by Seiko. This is you know for lack of a better word and house movement for the price is ridiculous still anyways that's kind of how i felt about it um, what i did i just forgot to mention previously was that the rotor is really under 
I don't know if you can hear that. The rotor on this is really loud. So, um, and if that ticks you off, that's another negative on it. But on the flip side, look at this baby. Can it, is it focusing? Look at that. You're telling me you don't like that? You're telling me you can't fall in love with this bad boy? I can, I can, I can eat this up. Look at that beautiful green emerald. Is it an emerald green? The sunburst style. Anyways, it's, it's much love. It's all love. It's love all around for this watch. So, uh, that's how I feel. Now, if you feel the same, please consider liking the video. It would help with the algorithm. Even if you dislike everything I've said, dislike my face, dislike my review, that's completely fine. Hit the dislike button. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought and how I can actually improve and give you guys a bit better uh, content. And if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. I'll be doing a lot of these watch reviews. Whatever watch I can get my hands on, I will do a review on. Do a first take, unboxing, the whole shebang. And I've got a macro lens now, as you probably saw before, and I'm gonna try to take uh, better quality uh, photos and videos of the watch. Otherwise. Uh, I'm the Chirpy Panda. You guys have been amazing and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.